Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. It's episode number 1541 and we're going to talk about Han Solo. I promised we would but I'm putting it off until tomorrow because there was a bit of news over the last couple of days that's worth saying something about. Now, if it hasn't crossed your radar yet, here's the deal. The Hollywood Reporter released its annual list of the top 100 most powerful people in Hollywood. And at the number one spot on the list was Disney CEO Bob Iger. And as part of the Hollywood Reporter's big announcement of this list, they did an interview with Bob and asked him a whole bunch of different things. So... In this particular case, I wanted to share with you the part about Star Wars because there was just one question levied at him and one answer thereof. And so let's get into it. Here's the deal. Matthew Baloney, who wrote the article and who did the interview, says, Many believe Disney should pump the brakes and not put out a Star Wars movie each year. And Bob Iger responds by saying, I made the timing decision, and as I look back, I think the mistake that I made, I take the blame, was a little too much too fast. You can expect some slowdown, but that doesn't mean we're not going to make films. JJ is busy making nine. We have creative entities, including Benioff and Weiss, who are developing sagas of their own, which we haven't been specific about. And we are just at the point where we're going to start making decisions about what comes next after JJ's. But I think we're going to be a little bit more careful about volume and timing. And the buck stops here on that. Now, first of all, it's not really fair to say that many are saying that Disney should pump the brakes and not put a Star Wars movie out every year. I mean, The Force Awakens, Rogue One, and The Last Jedi all did tremendously at the box office, and nobody was saying, oh, maybe Disney shouldn't put out one every year. No, it's really only until they put out Solo five months after the last one that anybody said, oh, maybe we should pump the brakes. So, you know... No, many people have not been saying this, and many people have not been saying that it should be less than once a year. Granted, here on the podcast, I have said at times that, you know, I do have a fear that scarcity is one of the magic ingredients for Star Wars' success, and that, hey, I love getting a movie every year, but, you know, perhaps for, you know, generation upon generation, it takes a bit away from that specialist. It doesn't have the same cachet as the original trilogy did, and even as the prequel trilogy did. But I really don't think that this whole many are saying thing is accurate and that, you know, Disney should do it less than once a year. I, I don't think any of that is actually accurate at all. I think that's really kind of a straw man that's been put up by Baloney as part of this article and the whole interview with Iger. So, you know, it doesn't even have anything to do with the complaints that a certain segment of the population have with Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy. I mean... You know, that whole thing about Disney doing movies less than once a year, that's utterly unrelated. So I don't know where he's getting that idea. But be that as it may, you have to take what Iger says in response very seriously, which is that there's going to be something of a slowdown and Iger saying that, you know, maybe it was too fast. That just means that, hey, maybe five months after the last one is too fast. So, you know, I think... Right now, there's a lot of hay being made over this one and about, you know, Iger's comments being reflective of, oh, you know, something's going wrong at Lucasfilm or anything like that. No, no, no. We have to remind ourselves that even with the Marvel movies, for the most part, I mean, there was that Incredible Hulk overlap, but that was just, you know, something different. But for the first couple of years that they really got the Marvel movies going from Iron Man starting in 2008, they were only doing about one movie a year until they got to the Avengers. So... Again, yeah, the Incredible Hulk movie and the Iron Man movie came out in the same year. And, you know, the Incredible Hulk movie did very poorly. And you could make a, you know, similar argument about it that it was not as reviewed as well as, say, Iron Man was. Similarly, Han Solo was not reviewed as well as, say, The Last Jedi was. And they came out very proximate to each other. And, you know, so one definitely suffered as a result of, you know, a compilation of things. But 
be that as it may, the rest of the Marvel movies leading up until the first Avengers movie, they were definitely more spaced out by comparison. And you could make the same case here for Lucasfilm, as we have on the podcast, that maybe, now that they're ramping up again, maybe they're just not ready to go with one movie, you know, more than one movie a year, which is essentially what they've done. We have four movies in the space of two and a half years. That's a lot. That is a lot for a, you know, <laughs> that's a lot for a company that hasn't been doing movies really since, you know, what, 2005 with the, you know, last Star Wars movie, the Revenge of the Sith. Excuse me, just Revenge of the Sith, not the Revenge of the Sith, but you get what I'm saying. Yes, they've been involved with other movies and ILM and Skywalker Sam has been involved with all that stuff, but yeah, really, the big Lucasfilm story machine has not been ramped up since 2005, per se. So, Clone Wars, yes, the cartoon series and that stuff, kind of a separate animal. We're talking about, you know, television production there. We're not talking about movies. That's a whole other situation entirely. So when Iger says that they're going to be more careful about volume and timing, I think that really can only be a good thing. And, you know, does it mean that we're going to get less than one Star Wars movie a year? I don't know. I can't see Disney owning Star Wars and not doing one movie a year at the very least. I just don't see that as a possibility. It feels more like they're going to look at their schedule and figure out how they can do a Star Wars movie probably in the final quarter of every single year. It may not always be in December. They really wanted Mary Poppins Returns to have the December spot this year. So, you know, they have other priorities because they own so much at this point. But be that as it may, it's going to be an interesting time coming up, and I think we have a lot more to look forward to at Celebration Chicago that's going to get announced. You know, the whole thing about we're just starting to talk about what happens after 9, well, it seems like Celebration Chicago would be a great time to announce what some of those plans are, so we're looking forward to that. I'm going to take a quick break right now, and I'm going to talk about the one item that is probably being focused upon the most in Iger's statement because it's not there. And so here, a brief word from our friends at Nissan, and I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hey, Rebel Rouser. If you haven't checked out Nissan's Best in the Galaxy customizer, then what's keeping you? Here's the link to do it real quick. It's sw7x7.com slash custom. That'll get you right there. You can customize a Rogue, an Altima, or a Titan, and give it a design inspired by the Millennium Falcon, by an Imperial Heavy TIE Fighter, Moloch's Landspeeder, or four other different designs. Check it out, sw7x7.com slash custom. And hey, Solo A Star Wars Story is now available on digital, and it's coming September 25th on Blu-ray and new in 4K Ultra HD as well. Welcome back. So, like the Sherlock Holmes thing about the dog that did not bark in the nighttime, the fact that Bob Iger did not mention Ryan Johnson in his, you know, naming of things that are coming up has some folks, you know, <laughs> rushing to the presses, basically. You know, he mentioned Benioff and Weiss, but he doesn't mention Ryan Johnson. And of course, Ryan Johnson has tweeted out recently that yes, he is still working on his Star Wars trilogy, so it's not like anything's been canceled or anything like that. So, you know, just because Bob Iger didn't happen to mention Ryan Johnson in this quote, I don't think we can go reading into that too terribly. I've seen things saying, oh, look at, you know, the executive translation service, you know, how you try to interpret executive speak and CEO speak and whether this means that people's heads are going to be on the chopping blocks or something like that. I don't think we can really look too closely or read, you know, too deeply in between the lines on this one. I think... There's no reason to believe that Ryan Johnson has been somehow ousted or is going to be in that this, you know, lack of mention by Bob Iger is a sign that Ryan Johnson is in trouble in any way, shape, or form. There's no reason to suggest it, and it's just, you know, one of those things that has some alarmist types all up in arms and some conspiracy-related folks either, you know, very worried or very excited depending on where they sit on the whole Ryan Johnson spectrum. It's, you know, one of those crazy things that because of our, you know, wild, wild internet situation now, the obsession over it has gotten out of control. So, eh, you know, at this point, I wouldn't say, you know, no news is no news. So just the fact that he wasn't mentioned, I wouldn't make anything more of it other than, oh, two words that didn't appear in the article. So what? 
And that is going to do it for the show today. Yes, 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 we will talk about the whole Hans Bandeman issues thing tomorrow. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, wherever you're catching it, then please do. If you're not supporting the podcast on Patreon, then hey, I hope you'd consider that as well. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash SW7X7. For now, though, it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2018, Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.